There's a lot of different kinds of people that make this world go around. Some say that Spex O'Keefe is one of them. If you meet Spex in a church, Sunday school, prayer closet, heaven or hell, or anywhere in between, be careful. This is where he works. Spex O'Keefe is no ordinary detective. He's special. Spex O'Keefe, Spiritual Eye. It was a dreary fall morning as I awoke from my slumbering sleep. I staggered into the bathroom only to be greeted by the stare of a stone-cold face and a razor to my neck. It was a face I had confronted before, but with the help of some menthol shaving cream, I was usually able to conquer it. Not without a few nicks and scrapes, I might add. But anyway, shaving wasn't my only problem that day. Many more were lying in wait as I approached my office. It isn't easy being a spiritual eye. Problems and dangers wait around each bend. But somebody's got to do it, and today that somebody is me. Morning, Spex. Hi, Sherman. Gee, Spex, what happened to your face? There's about a roll of toilet paper on it. Ain't no time to explain, Sherman. There's more important things on our agenda. By the way, what's on the agenda? Well, there's a man in the outer office waiting. He says it's urgent. Well, send him in and get rid of this tissue. Hi, Mr. O'Keefe. My name's Barry Boyer. What can I do for you? Well, Mr. O'Keefe, I'm missing something, and I'm hoping you can find it for me. Hmm, missing, you say? Now, being a professional detective, deductive reasoning leaves two choices. It was either lost or stolen. How does he do it? Which is it, Mr. Boyer? I'm not sure, but I'd have to say lost. Why is that? Well, it's no good to anyone else. Okay, let's stop beating around the bush. You keep saying it's. What's it? Spell it out for me, Boyer. Uh, F... I are... No, 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 you don't have to actually spell it out. That's just gumshoe talk for tell it like it is. Oh, well, I've lost my first love. Your first love? Yeah, for Jesus. It's not there anymore. It's gone. You've got to help me, Mr. O'Keefe. I'm desperate. Without it, everything else I do is pointless. (laughs) Now, now, Mr. Boyer, uh, don't worry about it. We'll find it. Want some tissue? Thank you. Uh, Can you describe it, Mr. Boyer? What, the tissue? Uh, No, no, your first love. Was it big, small? Oh, very big. How long did you have it? Well, I got it when I first became a Christian eight years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a whole new person, kind of like that blind guy in the Gospels. Once I was blind, but now I see. It was like a huge weight had been lifted off me. All of the guilt and shame to realize it was all forgiven me because of Jesus. It was just me and Jesus. That simple. All I could think about, talk about, night and day was Jesus. I was just overflowing with my first love. When did you first notice it missing? Well, after about five years, I noticed it missing once in a while. But I always found it again. But this last year, I haven't seen it at all, and I'm afraid I've lost it once and for all. (laughs) Uh, 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 Well, we might as well get started. Sherman? Yes, Bex? You sit down with Mr. Boyer, and I want a report of everywhere he's been since he realized his first love was missing. Right, Chief. Uh, Mr. Boyer? Call me Barry. Right. Barry, I want you to tell Sherman all you can. Then go on home and stay there till we find your first love. (laughs) Stay at home? But I've got work to do. Without your first love, your work is useless. You said so yourself. Yeah, you're right. What are you doing, Chief? Me? I'm going to finish shaving and get ready to find something the Barry Boyer might not recognize if it was staring him right in the face. After a lengthy discussion, my assistant Sherman had completed a thorough report of Barry Boyer's whereabouts prior to the loss of his first love. I looked over the locations with my keen detective eyes. Sure, he could have lost it anywhere, but due to my incredibly well-tuned hunches, I narrowed down the suspected places to a measly handful. Besides, this show doesn't have the time or budget to go everywhere Barry Boyer had been. We decided to stop wasting time with long introductions and follow up our first lead. Can I help you with something? Yeah. What is this, Spex? A library? Close but no cigar, Sherman. This is the first place on Barry Boyer's list. The Bible Study Institute? The Bible Study Institute, exactly, Sherman. Well, what do people do here, Spex? Why, Sherman's as clear as the egg on your face. They study the Bible. May I help you? Yes, I'm Spex O'Keefe, and this is my assistant, Sherman. We need a little information. Oh, well, you'll be walking the Sound Doctrine Room. They can answer any questions you have. Well, we're looking for one specific thing, and we can't seem to find it. Oh, I see. Then you'll want the concordance room. Miss Waverly, show these gentlemen to the concordance room. Uh, Excuse me, but that won't be necessary. See, we're not here to study the Bible right now. We came to talk about one of your patrons. Oh, I understand. Who do you need to know about? Barry Boyer. Barry Boyer? One second. I'll pull his file. Let's see here. Barnacle, Barney. Ah, here it is. Boyer. 
Oh, yes, I remember Barry. He was here quite frequently. We're looking for Barry's first love. He's lost it, and we'd like to know if this could be where he left it. Yes, Mr. O'Keefe, I was aware that Barry had lost his first love. How's that? Did he tell you? No, they never need to tell me. I just know. Their entire motivation and study habit changes. Changes? In what way? Well, they don't seem to love the word anymore, but they use it more as, as a weapon. A weapon? A weapon? Yes, a weapon. You see, when Barry first came in years back, he'd spend almost all of his time in the hunger and thirst after God's word room. But uh, I guess he had his fill, and slowly he spent more and more time in the doting about questions and striving of words department. He'd only study the word to either argue about it or to know more than his friends. I think it made him feel more spiritual. Boy, Barry Boyer sure sounds like a creep. Oh, no, no. Barry's really a good young man. I just think he's having a little trouble right now. Understandably, trying to be a Christian without his first love. It's like uh, playing without a full deck. Precisely. We've got to find it. Well, I sure hope you do, but I'm afraid you won't find it here. Oh? Yes, I don't know where he did lose it, but I'm sure it isn't here. But ma'am, this is a big building, so many rooms. How can you be sure? Well, Mr. O'Keefe, we keep our first love in our heart, so to lose it, one would have to have their heart open. Yes? Well, Barry never did. When he came to study the word, his mind was open, but not his heart. At least not lately. Oh, but there was a time Barry's heart was so open to God's word, everyone could see it. But sadly, not anymore. Yes, Mr. O'Keefe. I believe you'll have to search elsewhere. Thank you. We will. You've been a great help. Come along, Sherman. Right, Specs. We've got to visit the second lead on our list, if we can find it. Excuse me? Yes? May I suggest our Bible map room? You can find anything there. Why, thank you. You're welcome. We took the librarian's advice and went to the Bible map room to find directions to the location of our next search for Barry Boyer's missing first love. We drove down Egypt Avenue, cut across Wilderness Highway to save time, and got off on the Jordan Road exit. It was quite a trip. It seemed like it took 40 years, but finally we arrived at our promised land, the prayer closet. A quiet, unassuming little building, but what goes on inside is powerful. We approached boldly with confidence. Boy, Specs, it's dark in here. You're right, Sherman. Stay close to the light. Ah! What happened, Sherman? Oh, I stumbled on a kneeler. Well, we all stumble sometimes, Sherman. Be careful. Yeah, hello, I'm Mr. Johnson. Welcome to the prayer closet. Are you looking for a room? Well, possibly. Well, you we see... have many different kinds of rooms to choose from, depending on your needs. Well, actually, we, we have the praise rooms. They're real nice to begin your stay with. Then we have the petition rooms, the intercession rooms, and, of course, the Thanksgiving rooms. That's great, Mr. Johnson. Fine, but you see that... fine. Boy, show these gentlemen to rooms 704 and 705. Any luggage, sir? No, we don't. Here are your keys. Wait a minute. Now, if you'll listen for just a second, you haven't heard a word I've said. Yes. I'm so sorry. You see, that's one of the biggest problems we have here at the prayer closet. We seldom quit talking long enough to listen. Please accept my apology. No problem. Now, about those rooms. Any luggage, sir? Uh, we don't need rooms. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Why? Well, you see, business is a little slow. People just aren't praying the way they used to. Not like during the great revivals. Boy. Any luggage, sir? Back then, the prayer closet was just overflowing. Hmm, sorry to hear that. Yes, well, I'll keep praying. So now, how may I help you? My name is Spex O'Keefe. I'm a spiritual eye. Mm -hmm. My client, Barry Boyer, lost his first love. It's my job to track it down. We're wondering if he lost it here. Uh, let's see. What, what was the name? Barry Boyer. Huh. Name doesn't ring a bell. Any luggage, sir? Yeah, I'll check the reservations. Uh, excuse me. What are they doing? Oh, they're wrestling in prayer. Mr. Carmichael, watch your hip. We don't want it to pop out of its socket again. Uh, yes, it, 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 here it is. Uh, Barry Boyer. Has he been here recently? No, no, I'm afraid not. It seems he makes uh, quite a few reservations, but just never shows. Well, has he ever been here? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, according to his record, he spent a lot of time here years back. Uh, used every room in the house. Quite a warrior, I guess. But let's see. Then about a year and a half ago, he... Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, I remember him, of course. Clockwatch Boyer. Clockwatch? Yes, he'd have to practically drag himself in here. Then the whole time he'd keep asking the time. Never stayed until checkout. In fact, the most he stayed would be, oh, five minutes, and then half of that was spent asking what time it was. So you don't think he lost his first love here? Oh, no, no. Although some people do. How's that? Well, you see, they just stop coming to the prayer closet out of love and start coming out of duty, so to speak. It becomes a real drag, and the first love gets lost. And Barry Boyer? No. Oh, 
Oh, no, no. He never stayed long enough to get his knees warm. Well, thank you, Mr. Johnson. My pleasure. I'll be praying that you find it. Remember, seek and ye shall find. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Our client was well remembered at the Bible Study Institute and at the prayer closet. But questioning proved futile. Three days and still no sign of Barry Boyer's missing first love. No time to waste. I choked down a quick Brussels sprout sandwich, and Sherman and I scurried to our next hope for the mysterious answer. Well, here we are, Specs. Right on time, Sherman. I just ran out of introduction. What's the name of this place? The Fellowship Hall. Aha. Uh-huh. So this is Barry's hangout. Yep. He said he came here at least once a week. Great. I'll file that in my brain under R for remember it. Boy, Specs, there's a lot of people here. That's right, Sherman. Good thing, too. One thing every believer needs is fellowship. It's quite uplifting. Yeah, like they say, iron sharpens iron. Sherman, you've been studying. You betcha, every chance I get. This is a big place, Sherman. I I wonder where to start. Specs, there's a directory right here. Good thinking, Sherman. Thanks. Okay, uh, room 501, bearing one another's burdens. Uh, Room 508, rejoicing together. Room 721, mutual encouragement. Room 843, welcoming new believers. The list is virtually endless. Yeah, but which room did Barry go to? That's the 45-cent question, Sherman. Hello there. You two are new here, aren't you? Uh, Yes, we are. Well, my name's Eb Richardson, but everyone knows me as Friendly Ale. My name's Spex O'Keefe, but everyone knows me as Spex O'Keefe. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you there. Mm -hmm. Hey, who's your awkward little friend here? My name's Sherman. Well, praise the Lord. You know, God's been so good to me, I I just rejoice being able to meet new brothers. Mind if we ask you a few questions, Eb? Go right ahead. I'm here to serve. The Bible says... if you want to be great in God's kingdom, be the servant of all. What do you need to know? Well, do you know a brother named Barry Boyer? Barry? Sure do. Been coming here for quite a few years. Where'd he hang out? Well, at first he spent a good amount of time everywhere. Yes, sir. If fellowship in the Lord was to be had, Barry'd be in the middle of it. How about lately? Which rooms was he in? Well, lately... Well, he hung around out in the yard with a few of the guys. What is the yard used for? Well, it, it isn't used, really. Well, they just hang out there and shoot the breeze. Talk about baseball, movies, cars, anything except the Lord. Well, well I, I don't want to gossip. I mean, there's enough gossip here in the name of fellowship. Good point. Well, but it really isn't gossip, Mr. Specs, because I did go to Barry about it. Well, about what? Well, about never talking about Jesus anymore. He said that him and the fellows spent so much time together at the Bible Study Institute that afterwards, when they'd come here to the fellowship hall, they'd talk about other things. Said it was like leaving at the office, whatever that means. Hmm, I see. Speaking of leaving, let's go. Thank you, Eb. But Spex, we just got here. I've seen enough, and his first love's not here. Come along, Sherman. So long, Mr. Spex. Bye-bye, little buddy. Gee, Spex, how'd you know that Barry didn't lose his first love at the Fellowship Hall? Sherman, love for God is spiritual. That means to lose something spiritual, he'd have to be spiritually vulnerable. Sure, Spex, but the Fellowship Hall has spiritual fellowship. True, Sherman, but none of Barry's fellowship was spiritual. It was all casual, natural, but not spiritual. Well, even if he didn't personally have spiritual fellowship, couldn't he still have left it there? No, Sherman. Barry wasn't even there. But he said he was. Yes, outside, but he never entered in. Yes, that's why there wasn't a room for casual talking, and that's why they met out back. Right. Oh, yes, there's a place for casual talking, but spiritual fellowship must be the priority. There's no substituting. Sherlock Holmes, move over. Specs, O'Keefe, he's a spiritual guy. Specs, O'Keefe, he's a spiritual guy. I've got a detective now, Specs. O'Keefe, he's a spiritual sleuth. We were getting nowhere fast in the search for Barry Boyer's first love. Our list of suspected places was rapidly diminishing with no apparent solution. It seemed we were no closer than when we first started. That might be fine for an amateur like Sherman, but a professional like me is used to being hot on the trail, readying for the payoff. Frustration wasn't my usual cup of tea, but now I was taking the iced tea plunge. I became obsessed. Either I would conquer this case, or it would conquer me. 
Sherman, I've got it. Got what, Specs? The solution. You mean you found Barry's first law? Well, yes and no. Well, which is it, Specs? I don't have it, but I know where it is. Sherman, I want you to drive over to Barry's and bring him back on the double. Gee, I've never had a double before. I usually walk or strike out. Well, what are you going to do, Specs? Well, Sherman, as you know, I have you record every interview we hold. I'm going through those tapes and prepare my verdict. What a snooper! Sherman headed out to get Barry, and I set to work on the tapes. As I finished my final edit, the smell of victory was in the air. Specs, I'm back! Gee, what smell? Victory, Sherman! Oh, I thought it was your aftershave. Mr. O'Keefe, Sherman says you've solved my case. Looks like it, Barry. Have a seat. How'd you ever find it? I thought all of your leads were fruitless. Not so. They seemed fruitless at first because they didn't have your first love. But that didn't mean they didn't have the answer. Then it dawned on me. The Bible says there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. As I pieced together all they had said, suddenly it began to make sense. So where did I lose it? Barry, that's it. You didn't lose it. I didn't? Listen to this. We keep our first love in our heart. Oh, but there was a time Barry's heart was so open to God's word, everyone could see it. But sadly, not anymore. You see, Barry, it's still in your heart. But your heart's not open. It's clogged, polluted with so much other stuff, you can't even find your first love. Clogged? With what? Listen. Baseball, movies, cars, anything except the Lord. Quite a comparison to how you were. It was just me and Jesus. That's simple. All I could think about, talk about, night and day was Jesus. I was just overflowing with my first love. I can see it. I've complicated my relationship with so many other interests. I haven't made Jesus the priority like before. But how do I get him back? Well, that one took a little longer. But then I remembered what Mr. Johnson had said. Remember, seek and ye shall find, ask and it shall be given unto you. I realized you had the answer all along. We're looking for something in your heart, and the Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So your very words gave me the answer. You know, I was a whole new person, kind of like that blind guy in the Gospels. Once I was blind, but now I see. It was like a huge weight had been lifted off me. All of the guilt and shame to realize it was all forgiven me because of Jesus. Barry, the book of Revelation says, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Yeah, but what do I actually do? Just what it says. Remember who you were, a guilty sinner. Remember what Christ did for you on the cross. And realize each day who you are now in Jesus and thank God for it. Yeah, I see it now. Continually remember what Jesus did in my life, how I got my first love in the first place. If you dwell on what Jesus did and is doing in your life, your love will be fresh every day. Mr. O'Keefe, how can I thank you? I can feel the love already. I'm remembering what it was like when I first repented and received God's love. Well, Specs, you solved another one. Yes, Sherman. It's so easy that it seemed complicated. I just hope we don't have to find it again in a few years. You know, Sherman, if you keep your eye on something constantly, you can't lose it. Well, that's my boss. Specs Pokey. He's a spiritual guy. Specs.